principles of stratigraphy in geology. How geologists using basic principles to reconstruct the geological history. We'll talk about basic principles and how we applied to reconstruct age of deposits and to understand the past environments. Let's talk about that. In the previous videos, we talked about how people reconstruct geological time scale using basic principles, and we talked how geologists using dating. We can date particular rocks, igneous rocks, metamorphic rocks, and we can know the specific age of particular deposits. But how we know age of fossils and sedimentary rocks, which are older? Charles Lyell was one of the first who formulated the four principles of stratigraphy we're using up to this day in geology. He didn't invent it mostly this, but he just used all the knowledge he know by that day from Stena and Hutton and reconstructed principles how we use rocks and deposits to understand geological history. First principle which we use in geology is principle of superposition. If you look on the deposits, you will understand that those rocks that have been deposited first, they will be at the bottom, and the one that gone on top of it will be younger. How material deposited at the bottom of the ocean, the bigger, heavier rocks go first on the bottom, then you have more finer material settling in through the water column, and it will be younger. Same way, most of the sedimentary material deposited on the surface. However, as you know from geologies, the plate tectonic caused the rotation of material. So when you see your outcrop, like here, for example, you can understand where the up, where is down. Maybe this layer of material was overturned several times, and it did happen in history. Therefore, this principle of superposition will be very handy. I will look on the finer materials, for example, in the sand, see in which direction is gradient is, and it will tell me where was the up and down at the moment of the deposition. Therefore, you can also understand the relative age. These sand beds on the bottom older than ones on top. Next law will be the law of original horizontality. As we talked again, at the bottom of the ocean, the floor is reasonably flat. Otherwise, material will not be deposited. And majority of sedimentary rocks were deposited during the relatively flat conditions. We can say the bed angle could be up to half or one degree, but no more. When we see the deposits and they're overturned or tilted, you can say that it's not how they were deposited in the first place. So some other forces move them since they were deposited. And here become handy the terms of unconformity. Unconformity, it's this ages between, like here, overturned material that previously was flat when it was deposited, then something happened and then moved, shifted to the side. Then some erosional agent destroyed the part of it in the place we which you called unconformity. And the next sediment was deposited on top of it. Unfortunately, with unconformity, we don't know how long this gap was between previous overturned material at the bottom and the new freshly deposited material at the top. Only the dating will tell you the minimum age between these two events. However, looking on this unconformity, you can fairly say there was a gap in time in between these processes. Next law, which Lyle pinpoint and we use since, it's the law of cross-cutting relationships. And it's usually applied to volcanic intrusion. You see in this material, from the previous principles, you can see all the material, layer of the younger material on top, and the third material cutting through them. You cannot have something cutting through something if it's older than material. So layer 1 and 2 has to be deposited that before. Therefore, geologists understand relatively layer 1 and 2 definitely older layer 3. And by dating layer 3, which will be more probably igneous rocks, and we have absolute dating using uranium and lead, for example, we can know the age of this intrusion, we can say that layer 1 and 2 at least older than the age of this layer 3. 
And the last law will be the law of original lateral continuity. This is one of the trickiest law which people have to come out with. And again, understanding that in the marine shelf environment, you deposited material on a flat surface and on a broader scale. For example, in the bottom of the ocean, you will have similar sequences of sedimentary rock depositing on a bigger scale in lateral direction. Therefore, if you have processes after that, like material was lithified, become solid and then uplifted, and then eroded by some processes on the surface, for example, river cutting through, like in the Grand Canyon, you will know that to the left of the river cut and to the right, you will see that from the both sides of the river cut, you have same layers of the same sediment. Therefore, for example, if you date one layer, particular sediment, you can correlate and on the other side it's of the same age. It might apply for big distances. Finding similar sequences, we can know that they have originally were the same. Therefore, with in terms of dating the deposits, it's make much easier life for scientists if you reconstruct as much as you can all the environment in the area, finding the same deposits, their continuity, and reconstruct it, and then you just find something that you can date in particular places to find absolute or minimum age of that deposit, and you can faster reconstruct that environment. But let's come back to understanding of the absolute age of those sequences. As we talked in the video before about dating the rocks, geological dating, we figure out that there's a problem with dating sedimentary rocks because we don't produce new crystals we can date with radiometric dating. We can only use the carbon dating for sedimentary rocks if you have some remnants of the life in them. However, remember we talked that the half-life of the carbon isotopes is no more than 5,730 years, so you can fairly clearly date something about 20,000 or maybe up to 50,000 years old, but not older. So how geologists date those older sedimentary deposits which are hundreds or even millions years old? We still will date some fossils and we know the relative age of the sediment sequences and we will be mostly using the principle of correlation. For example, you see this nice sequence of sedimentary rocks and you have the fossils within the layers. Underneath you will have the fossils type A, on top you will see the fossils type B. Using the Lyle principles you will reconstruct approximately which sediments older which are younger. But what about specific age? Is it 1000 years old sediment or is it 360 million years old? And luckily in sedimentary environment where we have our organisms, fossils deposited, when they were living there they were somewhere nearby the volcanic activity. And commonly geologists will look for any volcanic ashes within that sequences to precisely date the age of the sequences. For example, here we have fossil B bounded by two volcanic eruptions ashes, a lower one, which we can absolute date, finding it age, and the top one. Therefore, you will know that the fossil B will be at least older than top layer of ash and younger than bottom one. Luckily, we can date precisely the ashes of the volcanic. We will find the crystals, for example, for uranium and lead, radiometric dating, and we will date uh, numerous crystals in the deposits for statistic analysis and finding the absolute age of this ash. It will give you the age plus minus several million years. However, for very old materials, it's a very good approximation. Using the our law of original lateral continuity, you can also find the same deposits in the same type of the material in different places in the area, use the age which we already found. Therefore, you don't have to look for another ashes in the next area, unless you're not sure that was deposited in the same time. Therefore, geologists work as a little detective they're looking for all this law, they're trying to first reconstruct as much as they can relative ages of deposits. And in the quaternary geology we do the same, reconstructing the landform formation as well. 
For example, I will understand which river terraces or deposits were first, what's come next, and then I have the river cutting through, third, and the new deposit layering down on top of it as fourth. When I know all this relative reconstruction, what's happened in the valley, then I can find some reference deposits or radiocarbon date to know the specific ages of specific river terrace or other deposits. And it will give me the picture when and how it was deposited through the time. I hope you get a picture on how geologists reconstructing the environment, going back in the very older times through geological time scale or in the more recent times. Nevertheless, we're using these basic principles to reconstruct the environment based on observing the environment, what's happening with the deposition and erosion today.